So this is the first in a series of videos I intend to make um, about chess. Uh, I think that I'm going to cover my credentials in some future video, uh, just so that you know, you know, does the emperor have clothes? Uh, I'm not a GM, I'm not a grandmaster, uh, but I've beaten grandmasters and I've won rated master tournaments and I prefer to remain anonymous on the web, even though some of you are going to know me by my voice and maybe some of the games I'm going to be showing you in the future. So my first um, video is going to be basically why you don't need a chess teacher. There's a huge amount of chess business out there in the world right now. And um, once upon a time, a long time ago, when I was a university student, I was uh, recruited to teach a course in chess at the college. and. That was because I was the highest rated player in the college, and our, our college allowed professors to compete for the college championship. I was a student, and I was a student, and uh, just to make a long story short, why is it that I failed as a college chess teacher? Well, to begin with, I was pretty young, I was a teenager, and I was teaching a lot of people. Uh, over 200 people enrolled in this class, and uh, what's interesting about it was that about 30 people finished. And when we analyzed the reasons why these people took so long um, to drop out and finally give up chess and uh, finally finish the, the program with uh, 30 people, uh, there were a number of reasons. And uh, the most basic reason was that they didn't need a chess teacher. Teaching chess is a waste of time. Now, I know I'm going to raise the ire of a whole lot of people out there who are interested in getting college scholarships and make a lot of money and getting, like, you know, stipends and, you know, becoming tutors and selling themselves, you know, as the great chess teachers of the world, but a person can teach themselves chess just like a person can teach themselves checkers. You know, it's the rules of chess that matter, and some people just don't have the patience to really understand the rules of chess or to pay much attention to, like, figuring out why uh, chess is what it is. Um, and the, uh, the next reason is that uh, everybody knows better. Chess players and people who take up chess tend to have enormous egos and the reason why they play chess, which is the most complicated of uh, most games and sports and board games, is that uh, they want to prove that they're smarter than other people and uh, that's not a bad thing. Uh, that's a wonderful thing. But uh, these people want to argue about the most basic aspects of chess because they've all played chess at some point or some of them have, some of them haven't. They're learning their different stages and you know, I would even get uh, argued with in class by professors who would say, oh, well, well, why is it important to castle early? You know, uh, castling seems like a waste. I beat my opponents, you know, uh, without castling all the time. So I think that's something that you ought to question, you know, why, why this is an established principle. And, you know, they're, they're basically asking uh, questions that have been covered for the last couple hundred years um, because they think they know better because they have big egos. And so... Egos get in the way of learning in a lot of cases. Um, they help when it comes down to being beaten, and if you really hate being beaten, it will help you learn faster. But uh, I got asked a lot of questions like that, and in the end, about 30 players finished my class, became decent club players, some went on to become, become uh, even good tournament players. Um, so I, I regret the fact that all these people dropped out, but uh, you can only please so many people that I, I do admit that I was a failed teacher. So. Maybe uh, you do need a chess teacher, just a lot better one than I was capable of being, but uh, I really don't think so. I think you can teach yourself the moves of chess and the basics by reading a number of books. What books would I read? Well, after reading 200 plus chess books in my life, thoroughly, and learning them, and becoming a fairly highly rated player, I came up with these three. If I were to teach somebody to play chess to begin with, the first book that I would start them out on, and this is what I do with my students, uh, and yes, I have students, but I'm a coach, not a teacher, is Chess Fundamentals by Capablanca, which is um, the first good chess book a person should take, because what happens to people is that they can't win one games. You can learn how to win a pawn or a piece or something, but you can't win a one game. And Capablanca takes you um, from the standpoint of one of the great world champions and says, how do we win one game? So let's start with the end game first. So you have to learn how to uh, win the end games before anything else in chess. Capablanca provides this. The next most important thing is uh, Hans Mach, who was also a, a famous player, um, wrote a book called Pawn Power in Chess. It's uh, not read very widely, and it's a great book. And I would suggest anybody who's interested in chess strategy base of their study on Hans Mach's teaching 
Um, the book is uh, not short and it is uh, somewhat complex, but as you begin to read, you'll begin to get a tremendous basis for positional chess and the structures of pawns, which is by far the most important thing you can learn as you're beginning to grow in the chess world. Thirdly, what separates us all in the end are tactical abilities and tactical prowess in chess. That's why everyone isn't going to become a master and very few are going to become grandmasters and in fact very few are even going to become class A players because there's this thing called tactical ability in chess. Basically it's your ability to calculate, think ahead, and see patterns. And you can learn a lot about tactical abilities and maximize your ability to do well tactically by reading The Art of Sacrifice and Chess by Zonska Brofsky. And the, once again, this is a book that hardly anybody reads. There are, are better books that people like now, and you know there have been books that are rewritten. But you just get this basic book, and you can pick it up cheap uh, somewhere, you know, secondhand. It's a wonderful book, and it will show you patterns and let you understand things and thrive as a club player and move into the tournament world. And finally, the and lastly, the most important thing that players have to do is the the single best way to get better at chess is to play chess. Simply start to go to your chess club. Play 3D chess over the board with other people who are interested in doing that. Join your own rated federation. Every country pretty much has a rating system. People can go get their country's rating system, pay them 50 bucks a year, 12 bucks a year, whatever it is, and enter tournaments. And I would suggest you start in a chess club and play over the board every week or every other week with your friends and your new chess friends. And the best way to improve at chess, and this is true even at the higher levels, is after you're through concentrating really hard on a game for an hour or two, go over it with the person who just beat you. Many of them are very kind and more than willing to help you. As I said, all these chess players have, you know, plenty of egos are going to tell you where you went wrong and what they would have done and how they would have handled and what they were worried about and what you didn't do. And at that stage in time, it's going to be very fresh in your mind. And you're going to be thinking about, gee, why did I do this? Gee, yes, I thought of it. But it, then you could, like, bounce ideas off of them. Well, what, what if I had done this? And, you know, what, what if you had done that? Maybe they would have seen stuff or not seen stuff. And it, would, it gets to be a two-way, very enlightened uh, way of learning. And my advice is simply quick postmortems with stronger players. Now, in the end, uh, after you've taught yourself chess, it may be recommended that you get an actual chess coach, although, you know, there are many great players who've never had a chess coach and many uh, highly rated players who have done nothing but read books. And my suggestion would be teach yourself chess, read the books, join a chess club, play in some tournaments, and see whether or not this is something you really want to do because it's the greatest hobby in the world and it's something that you're going to enjoy the rest of your life that you can leave for your children and, and teach to your future generations. Thank you. This was my first chess video.